Is this God's Bell? <laughs> you ever heard that? The part of God's wow. Bell? It's like, bow, 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 bow. I can't think of the song it's in. But That's it's like definitely a, there. Wait, is that a... We beseech thee, that one? Yes, I think one? so. Look at you knowing God's spell. Okay, okay, I see you. I only know that one because that's the banger from it. We beseech, there's so many bangers. What do you mean? <laughs> that's, well, that's so upsetting. One. That's like the really good one. Okay. <laughs> we beseech thee, hear us bow, bow. <laughs> what did you play disciple uh, number seven? I was the first one to come to Jesus. Thank you very much. <laughs> I disciple sing. number one? Yeah. Wow. I sing day by day. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's a banger too, actually. It maybe, is. Maybe God's spell is good. It Imagine is good. little me, my junior year, mm-hmm. day by day, just on stage, thriving. That was good. Thank you. That was good. Do we have to pay for copyrights in this show? Nah, we're mm. just a podcast. No one will know. We're not sponsored, except by Anchor. <laughs> <laughs> no, we literally are, though. Yeah. Um, we haven't gotten a new sponsorship. Like ever. Guys, you should sponsor us so we can't play any music. What? They should sponsor us so we can't play music. Give us a reason. Yeah, give us a reason not to do copyright. We could literally play so much music. What are they going to do? Yeah, exactly. They can't take nothing. They can't, they're not mm. giving us yet, so. We used to talk about this on the show, but do you remember like we used to be like, when we were a radio show, we played music in between cases. Yeah. And it was like, the case itself was like 20 minutes, and now our episodes run for like an hour 10. I want to know how we related the songs to the case. I feel like the only one I can remember is like that, mm-hmm. there's, I can't think of the name of that song. There's one specific song. Was it the one I played? Yeah. Was it Play Destroy by Poppy? Was it that one? No, no. Oh, gosh. What is it? Uh... <laughs> that's gonna bother me it's like a really popular like horror song horror song monster mash <laughs> no no i'll have to think of it by the end of the show but like i'm like how do we think of songs <laughs> for that show ever <laughs> it's just like so funny to me though because it's like we i don't know it's just like funny like how we tried to find music for it mm-hmm. and it was never just like it was hard <laughs> it was hard we tried to do it for like two weeks with music and we both were like this sucks yeah i feel like also our show as a radio show didn't work as well like it was still great don't get me Mm. wrong but like there were too many stops and starts we're kind of like a flow type situation very that yeah like we had to be like okay let's stop to put this thing in let's stop to do this Mm. make sure we hit the 30 minute mark yeah Yeah, that was one thing that was like annoying is that like since it was like radio broadcast we had to like always stop at like 20 minutes 30 minutes or like 40 which was like annoying because it's like We'd be in a flow of a joke or a conversation or something, and then it would just be like, bam. Suddenly, here's this. You could be, like, in the middle of, like, a true crime case, like, talking about, like, something really scary and, like, dark happening, and then it would be like, and now, here's some ads. Here's some ads. And, like, it's, like, cut off halfway, because I'm, yeah. I'm like, Tiffany, Tiffany, we're at the 30 minute mark. We're at the 30 minute. Gotta go. You gotta stop talking. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but I, I think this is... This is better. This is it. Yes. Yes. Um, also, we're the Mystery Files, guys. I don't, we never introduced it. So oh, we, yeah. We did the God's Bell bit and kind of forgot that we're a podcast. And I'm Tiffany. That's Logan. Sometimes yeah. our cold <laughs> openings get the best of us. They do. And I'm like, some new listener is going to be like, who are these people? <laughs> I listened to the cold <laughs> opening from last week because mm-hmm. it's actually like nine minutes long. <laughs> yes. The cold opening is nine minutes long from last week. But it's funny. Cute. I was listening to it. I was like, we're funny people. <laughs> We are funny people. We gotta keep making our egos go higher. My ego is highest when I'm with you. Yeah. If it, that's me too. Because you're rubbing off on me. We filled each other no. up too much. It's bad. It's like a fire. A terrible no, exactly. fire. That's why like, we're we're great as a duo, but also awful as a duo. Because our comedy chops just like yeah. stack and stack like, on Like I'm each thinking other. I'm the funniest person. And it's just not good. Because I'm not funny. God complex is coming out. Like, yeah. Fully. <laughs> For once. Here it is. <laughs> Just if, now. if you want to uh, heighten our God complexes a little higher, you could also follow us on Instagram yes, at the Mystery us. Files underscore. underscore. Yes. Please. Also, go to our YouTube. Check out whatever we got up there. Yeah. <laughs> like, there couple, we have like two the documentaries on there. Yeah, we have. We also have our Christmas special. If you want some mini mysteries, mm. that's super duper fun. We have yeah. the Lost Door episode, mm-hmm. fun little documentary about a place in Pittsburgh. Great. We have a couple episodes back when we were in our old podcast studio, and then mm-hmm. it got really, really hard to do YouTube. 
yeah. videos. It did. I feel like it'd be and different no if we had them a either. different thing. Yeah. Like, we had, like, maybe five views on most of them. Yeah. I think they have a lot more views now because I finally logged into my YouTube on my TV because I was like, mm. ah, but it's connected to the Mystery Files YouTube. Oh. So I'm getting, like, some of the Mystery Files stuff, but I was looking at, like, the view count because they were all, like, on my feed. Yeah. And, like, they were pretty high. I, I think I saw that, too. I think they're getting recommended more. Like, I don't know if, like, the algorithm is finally paying attention to us, but when I go mm-hmm. on my personal YouTube page, I get recommended the uh, Under the Tree, like, multiple yeah. times. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, wow. You're like, that's so sweet. Like, I'm surprised they're pushing this one out. Also, I got our one video, I think I said this last week, on my FYP from our TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I was like, where did this come from after all these weeks? We should use our TikTok again soon. We should. I think it's fun. Maybe we should try to figure out something to do after this. We we'll should. We'll post it. That'll be fun. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. But yes, yeah. follow us everywhere. It's fun. We want to hang out with you guys virtually. So, yeah. Yes, please do. And and when we've noticed the growth, we've noticed uh, like a lot of new followers. At least I have. I've seen a few yeah. people follow. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So thank you. And it's not like a like a scam robot from what yeah. i've noticed i'm like okay you're not trying to sell me bitcoin <laughs> yeah exactly and also i like that on our mystery files instagram we also like follow other podcasts and i think yeah. they're really fun to follow too i'm like that's mm-hmm. so cute i love when they're like supportive too like because we've gotten a few like dms about it too and they're just like so nice yeah it's really awesome shout out <laughs> <laughs> shout out to all the other podcasts that follow us we, we love, love you guys you. yes <laughs> um so last week we did talk about the war of the world yes yes right yes, yes because you told me <laughs> i <Yes>. forgot <laughs> i honestly forgot i forgot too because we're ahead of our production schedule right now yeah so it's like confusing also like when we leave like i've had this issue since we first started i don't know what the last <laughs> episode is ever because well i texted logan last night because i was like hey is it your episode or mine tomorrow <laughs> i just completely forgot but i had started so i was fine but i also mm. restarted the case because i had new ideas and that's mm. fine <laughs> we just abandoned the old one <laughs> throw it out and start anew yeah maybe one day she'll come back but i'm excited <laughs> do you want to get into yeah. it should i give you a little drum roll oh sure but i also want to preface oh, that God. we've been talking about this for a while wait doing really this case yeah this Just whole saying. season is like a fan favorite like thing where it's like a uh, fan yeah. favorites for us. <laughs> yeah, for us. <laughs> like things we've favorites. wanted to do for a while. Yeah, that's we, exciting. We've talked about it for a long time. Shut up. And you said it's mythological. Yeah, don't guess it though. She'll get it immediately. Medusa. No. <laughs> what if I was like Logan? <laughs> Logan. Logan. Okay. okay. Uh, drum roll. Oh my god. Drum roll, so please. Excited. This week on the Mystery Files, I present the case of. Mermaids. And it's real this time. Wait, really? Yeah. Really? It's like actually <laughs> yeah, mermaids. It's real. Oh my god. Because I know I, I goofed with you last <laughs> one time and I was like, ah, just kidding. It's p- sleep paralysis demons. <laughs> this week it's actually mermaids. I just wanted to I wanted to stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Wait, that's so funny. <laughs> because like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's like <laughs> <laughs> That's just like perfect consistency of a joke on the season now. Yeah. Like, that's what, yeah. <laughs> like people are gonna listen to the uh, the, the sleep, sleep paralysis, paralysis episode and see mermaids, and they're gonna like look up and be and like, be like "So they did do mermaids, huh?" Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like interesting. I see what you mean by like mythological, though. Yeah, I'm like, um, what is it really? It could be supernatural, but like, yeah, it's like a little bit of both. And I'm sure like yeah. we're gonna be talking about sirens and stuff too, and they're like yeah. from. Are mermaids a part of other, like, mythos? I think they're a part of folklores and stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, what's the <laughs> what's the country with the Vikings? Uh, Help me out here. Guys, don't cancel us. I don't know please, places. Please Google it. Google it. What country is Vikings? Uh, 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 what is the Viking place? Uh, what is it? I can't spell. Give me a second. What is it? <laughs> oh, this is our okay. Google search of the day. I still spelled it wrong. <laughs> Uh, Finland. No. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Okay, Norway. That's the main one I was thinking. Viking Town. Let's see. Okay. Yep, I got nothing. Okay. Cool. None of these seem like a perfect. Place. Okay, so all those places. Denmark. Got it. Denmark. Cool. Got Vikings. It. Checked. Okay. Ark. <laughs> Aren't Vikings just pirates? Basically. But scarier. But scarier. With pointier hats. I had a couple of nice Vikings in my day on yeah. television. On television. Mm-hmm. The Flying Dutchman. Like the dad from Wait, no, he's How a to Train Your Dragon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is a Viking, isn't he? He is a Viking. Pretty yeah. cute Viking. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that one. 
Don't mind me. <laughs> I needed to cough. That bothered me. Do your little... <laughs> It'd be Get like your little that. cough out and let's talk about some mermaids. Yeah. First, I'd like to thank our little um, websites today. We have, I don't know if it's livescience.com or live science. Either way, shout out to you. And then folklorethursday.com, which is See? kind of a funny little thing. I was right about folklore. You knew. It's mostly folklore. Thank wow. you, Taylor Swift. That's a you joke. You're welcome. <laughs> I did that for you. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. So, centuries ago, mysterious sea serpents and mermaids were believed to be hidden in the world's vast oceans. Merfolk, which are mermaids and mermen, are, of course, the marine version of half-human, half-animal legends that have captured human imagination for years. So, one source, called the Arabian Nights, described mermaids as having moon faces and hair like a woman's, but their hands and feet in their bellies Wow. Their feet were in their bellies, and they had tails like fishes. Oh. I never Ooh. thought about, like, where Wait. their feet were. So they uh, do have feet, but they're uh, in their stomach? Wait, so they're saying that, like, their feet were, like, pushed into their stomach, and they have a tail. <laughs> they didn't have to get into all that. So are they trying to say the pseudo pseudoscience behind it is if, like, if you were to, like, take a mermaid's tail off, there's, like, feet underneath? Uh, but no. Absolutely <laughs> I mean, not. Ew, what if it's just, like, a stomach? <laughs> And it's just the tail's connected. Like, you pull the tail off, it's just a stomach, but inside the stomach, instead of a baby being in there or something, you got, you got your feet in there. <laughs> Wait, what if how that's they... how Ariel became a human? Like, uh, Ursula didn't do anything, she just took her tail off and there was somebody, like, sticking <laughs> she, Wait, she just cut little <laughs> holes in her stomach and her legs popped yeah. out? <laughs> Ew. I'm disgusted. Ew. She's like, yep, I'm definitely a witch. <laughs> I'm <laughs> a witch. She just, like, puts in a little incision yeah. and they're just like, bah, bah, bah. Ew. That makes me so uncomfortable. It's like I see in cartoons when there's like an egg thing and mm-hmm. then like pops legs and just walks around. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. That's yes, they hop. do. Hop. It isn't hop. Isn't there something else that's in? Maybe. Ew, it's so visual. I feel visual. like that's like a main like trope in television. That's literally disgusting. That's basically I can what see mermaids that. are. <laughs> I don't know if I like this case anymore. <laughs> You're uh, like, I might go back to what I originally was playing. I might skip over to the next page. This week we're talking about sleep paralysis. <laughs> sleep paralysis. <laughs> Imagine if I did that. Sleep paralysis part two. Like I go through the entire intro. I do like three pages of mermaids. I, I don't edit that. it. I don't edit it. I'll just change the subject. <laughs> that'd be so oh good my God. no okay. that's revolting though <laughs> it is disgusting okay so charles j.s thompson a former curator at the royal college of surgeons of england notes in his book the mystery and lore of monsters uh he writes that traditions concerning creatures half human and half fish in form have existed for thousands of years and the babylonian deity era of oans the fish god is oh. usually depicted as having a bearded head with a crown and a body like a man, but from the waist downwards, he is shaped like a fish. Oh, kind of like King Triton. Kinda. Yeah, in Little Mermaid. Yeah, and, or Same like thing. Poseidon in oh, Greek yeah. culture, too. I guess Poseidon is a thing. <laughs> kind of forgot about that guy. Oops. <laughs> what was the name of that god? Um, A deity named Era of Oans, and I'm probably saying that wrong. It's O-A-N-N-E-S, so... Probably better Owen. than how I could say it. <laughs> what if it's Owen? <laughs> Owen. 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 Imagine so, yeah. being God of the Sea and being like, my name's Owen. My name's Owen. <laughs> Deity Owen. You can call me O. You can call me O. Owie. <laughs> Owie, Owie. <laughs> so let's get into some more history. So uh, Greek mythology contains stories of the god Triton, eh, Logan's friend, uh, the merman messenger of the sea, and several modern religions, including Hinduism and Candomblé. I probably said that so wrong. But they worship mermaid goddesses to this day. One of the oh. earliest depictions of a mermaid came from Assyrian mythology. A Targatus, I there's a lot of hard words. Some Got I love. It. Also known as Durketo or the Syria Syrian goddess, was half woman, half fish deity of the ancient city of Herapolis Bambasi in Syria. So oh. like there's a lot of like different cultures having these different people like in their religions and everything Mm -hmm. i'm like that's so i didn't know that especially like nowadays too yeah i didn't know in hinduism especially i didn't yeah i didn't know that that either i'm like a little mermaid goddess 
So, however, many people are perhaps most familiar with the Disney version of The Little Mermaid, <laughs> a somewhat sanitized version of um, Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, first published oh. in 1837. In some legends from Scotland and Wales, mermaids befriended and even married humans. So, like, some of the tales, they got they got it right in Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Also, have you seen, like, the spin-off type movie of The Little Mermaid? I feel like we've the talked about this. The one with her this. daughter? No, like, it's not, like, a Disney thing. It's like this blonde girl. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I have not seen it. That was Stephanie about. and I had it on DVD. It's like a really terrible version it's of it. Really niche. But it's so cute. <laughs> I'll have to. I think we have the DVD somewhere because I was like, "That's really? the cutest thing ever." Yeah, we were obsessed with it. Oh my god, I thought you were gonna talk about like how they try to do like a spinoff with like her daughter in it. I do know but... that one. That's the second. Well, that's a. Is it a second? Mm. Yeah, it's the second one. Yeah, and then I think she makes an appearance in like something else i don't remember what it was but they were trying to do a spin-off with her and it just like did not work i remember oh that. did you watch the show Mm-hmm. so cute i love how disney like made so many prequels that were just like oh yeah that's just before all this stuff happened <laughs> that's like... just it's fine <laughs> believe it kids are like okay isn't it like crazy to think like this is like side tangent but isn't it mm-hmm. wild that they're making like a buzz lightyear like origin story but mm-hmm. it's not like Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story. It's like the character of Buzz Lightyear as it is in the universe of Toy Story. Oh, didn't they already have a Buzz Lightyear movie? They did. They had well, they had a TV show. They had a like a. Oh, okay. They made a Saturday morning cartoon of Aww. the cartoon that's supposed to be in Toy Story. So basically, oh, it's like the that, similar energy. Mm-hmm. So basically, that show is the origin story of that. It's weird. I, I hate that there's, like, a Toy Story cinematic yeah. universe. Yeah, is it the OG voice actor? I don't think so, actually. Oh, I don't think it is. that's kind of sad. Well, what's the point? I know they're not all the same buzz, but, like, let <laughs> me have it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's someone hot, though. Sorry, I remember. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we need when we can't see the person. Yeah, especially when they're playing a little astronaut toy. <laughs> Perfect. They have to be real pretty looking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So... <laughs> back to this so in some uh things the mermaids befriended and even married humans so mary leo in her book notes that in the shetland islands mermaids are stunningly beautiful women who live under the sea their hybrid appearance is temporary the effect being achieved by donning the skin of a fish they must be very careful not to lose this while wandering about on land because without it they'd be unable to return to their underwater realm oh. which i think that's an interesting idea that like if they lose this skin then like they're they can't go back to being a mermaid what is it it's a they have like a let me find the they had this temporary effect of the dawning of a, the skin of a fish oh. that they have on their skin, I guess. Okay. So they can go out on land, but they have so to be careful not to lose this skin mm-hmm. because then they'd be unable to oh. turn to their underwater realm. Kind of reminds me of, like, in Luca, too. Yeah! Like, how, like, if they get hit by water, they turn back into a sea monster. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Luca. <laughs> I love Luca, too. It's a good, so good movie. But yes, very similar. So I feel like I've never heard that no, I haven't heard Side of that of either, it. so I'm guessing it's just, like, like a fish skin, like, on it. Yeah. It's like, probably, like, Enchanted or something, too. Yeah. Like, they would just Ooh. wear it out of the water. I think it's sort of, like, a high... It's just a thing to mm. affect their appearance to make them go into the world. Mm-hmm. So, what, and... What task could you do to, like, take that off? I don't know if they'd want it off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but just, like, how would they lose it if it's, like, on their skin? I guess, like... I mean, if someone, like, It's, like, a temporary to them. tattoo... <laughs> Mm. I was thinking, like, rubbing shoulders and it, like, falls off. I don't think but... it... I think it had to be a little tighter on there. Like, imagine, mm. like, a like sticker. Like, super glued on Like, a there. sticker on your skin. Mm. Okay. But, like, one of those really good stickers that, like, really stays on. <laughs> Not, like, the cheapy ones. Like, it hurts when you take it off. Like a Band-Aid. Like a Band-Aid. Like a Band-Aid. Like a Band-Aid. They got Band-Aid skin. <laughs> yes. So, in folklore, <laughs> mermaids were often associated with misfortune and death, luring arraigned sailors off course and even onto rocky shoals, according to the Ohio State University. This is where we started to get into, like, some of, like, that kind of, those ideas that, like, they would lure things. got it. So, though not as well known as their female counterparts, uh, mermen have an equally fierce reputation for summoning storms, sinking Mm -hmm. ships, and drowning sailors. One especially feared group, the Blue Men of the Minch, are said to dwell in the outer Hebrides off the coast of Scotland, according to the Scotsman. 
They look like ordinary men, from the waist up anyway, with the exception of their blue-tinted skin and gray beards. Local oh. lore claims that before laying siege to a ship, the blue men often challenge its captain to a rhyming contest. If the captain is quick enough of a wit and agile enough of tongue, he can best the blue men and ha save his sailor... Uh, Bapanese legends have a version of Murpho called Kappa as well. So like, oh, I've heard there's, of Kappa. Yeah, is this similar to like, was it called like the Kelpie or something? Yes, the, the Kelpies. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it like a fairy thing? Yeah, that, that was that was part of the fairy one, I think. Yeah, Kelpies. They're like, like sea like fairies. Yeah, they can be like I think like men. They can be like horses because usually Kelpies are like seahorses. Oh um, yes, what I've seen because like in media because I think. Um, and like Frozen 2, for example, I think the horse is called a Kelpie or something like a that. Kelpie. I think. I don't remember. I'm trying to think if those if those things also rhymed. There was one of those fairy creatures that we talked about that like summoned the sailors and everything. Mm -hmm. But didn't one of them rhyme as well? Like I wonder if this is based off a similar yeah, it's possible. legend mm -hmm. at that time. Like that's just interesting. Yeah, it coordinates a lot with fairies. It sounds like a... <laughs> It sounds like the mermen are just, like, bros, like, messing with, like, other yeah. pirate dudes. Like, like, imagine they're, like, blue-tinted hair, and they're like, ah, look at this guy, let's do this. Oh, uh, let's mess with him a little bit. Let's roughen <laughs> yeah. him up. Let's rough him up a little let's bit. Let's give him a riddle. <laughs> let's go sink a ship, huh? <laughs> like, no. like, what is, like, what's got five, uh, what's got, uh, five fingers and is ready for lunch? This knuckle sandwich. This and knuckle sandwich. They punch, him. <laughs> they punch <laughs> him right off the ship, and he's like, oh, they're mermen. <laughs> what the heck is happening here? Oh my goodness. Oh my god. So, um, on to Kappa. Uh, they are said to reside in Japanese lakes, coasts, and rivers. Mm. These child sized water spirits appear mm. more animal than human. Mm -hmm. So, with simian faces and tortoise shells on their backs, according Ooh. to Encyclia Encyclopedia Britannica. Ew, so they have shells on them. You think that's gross? I think that's kind of pretty. Pardon? You like, think that's cute? Like, they're little, like, water spirits, and they have, like, I'm just imagining, like, pretty shells, like, of, like, green or, like, gold, and they're just like, huh. Oh, I guess. Mm. You know? I, well, it said, it said they appear more animal than human, so I guess I'll take it. Yeah. I was imagining, like, a full-blown, like, realistic human with what a tail <laughs> with a shell on them. It's just a turtle, and but they used to, like, walking around, and they got a human face on them. Ew. What would you do? I'd run. <laughs> I'd be very scared. I'd flip the turtle over. It's like Darn. a, it's like a nightmare. It starts crawling towards you like a spider. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. You throw one of those bad boys on Mario Kart and it's over. Ew. <laughs> I'm just imagining like a a human slug. <gasps> that is... I've seen pictures of that before. I think. Oh. Should I look it up? Oh, uh, do not look up a human slug. Absolutely human not. Human slug. It kind of reminds me a little bit too of how we talked in the Loch Ness monster episode about how like there's that picture of like. The Loch Ness monster being more of like a slug creature. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? It's giving me very that <laughs> it as is well, very <laughs> which is just violently <laughs> gross. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Did you look it up? I can't find any proper pictures. I'm kind of upset. <laughs> Almost like it's not real. This is the closest I, mean, I can find. Okay, I'm gonna show this to Logan. Guys. Turning the computer. Out okay, imagine this one with a shell. That's okay. So it's like a. <laughs> ske ske skeleton exoskeleton of it it's just Exo. a human face with like Ew. a snake body but it also has like little antenna antenna eye oh god kind of like That's the horrifying. angular fish the angular fish you know the little like that like fish from finding nemo when they're like oh, underneath and it has a little scary light on one? it yeah yeah i think that's called an angular fish oh I think probably I'm right. is i'm kind of dumb so i don't know what i only know uh sharks so i couldn't tell you about the fish except the sawfish i know that one <laughs> are there sharks in this episode is there like no. a marsh oh, i wish Aww. what's the point what's the point i We're give up about this has been the mystery files goodbye <laughs> 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 next week we'll talk about sharks this episode is brought to you by anchor <laughs> anchor <laughs> I hope we put it in right there. <laughs> I lose it. I lose my You mind. have to put it at the most random spot. Mm -hmm. Like, do it, like, at the peak of something. And they're like, what? We did that during an episode. Wait, in the train episode? Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, let us give no us feedback ever, no on the No one's ever said bit. anything. <laughs> I hope you liked it. We put a car crash sound in. <laughs> and then went right to the ad. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, put that in here, right here. 
<laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, like the blue men, the Kappas sometimes interact with humans and challenge them to games of skill in which the penalty for losing is death. So, like, they're oh. playing hard. They're playing. Oh, my God. They're playing to <laughs> They're playing for souls. They're playing for souls, and oh they are. Oh, my God. Um, Kappa are said to have an appetite for children and those foolish enough to swim alone in remote places. Okay, children I don't get, but, like, people who swim alone in remote places, kind of. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? What mm-hmm. do you think's gonna happen? It's kind of giving me a little bit of, like, La La Rona, too. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Like, um, the idea of, like, going after children and stuff like that. That's, oh, like, yeah. crazy. Also, isn't that also part of a Japanese folklore thing? Uh, Spanish. Span. Oh, mm-hmm. yes, yes, yes. I was gonna mm-hmm. say. Yeah, it's Spanish folklore, I believe. But that, I think, like, I am... Um, it's really interesting to do this case because I feel like it's, like, playing into a lot of other water-based cases we've done or, like, things just with bodies of water. It's just, mm-hmm. like, that. that's, like, the one of the fun things about this show is just, like, seeing, like, oh, like, that relates back to this thing we used to yeah. talk about or this thing. Like, um, these Kappas sound crazy. Like, why, <laughs> why are they playing for, like, blood? <laughs> they want to play to the death. They want to go after children. Mm. And they want to uh, attack people who swim alone. Like, the mermen were just trying to prank people, yeah. like, by playing the games. But the Kappas are like, no, I want your soul. <laughs> I just want them to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I want. No, literally. <laughs> so, um, they go after these people, but they especially prize fresh cucumbers from a watery grave. What? What does that even mean? From a... They... What did they do? They prize. get... Prize. Like... Prize? They prize fresh cucumbers. Like they grow fresh cucumbers from a grave? I don't know. Like maybe that's something they're like weirdly obsessed with? I don't understand that. That... You do you, Kappa, but like what? All right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> They Kappa. really like cucumbers. I don't know. But fresh. <laughs> they specified fresh, so... Fresh. <laughs> if it's not from Whole Foods, I don't want it. I don't want it. Maybe it's like... <laughs> I, I honestly can't, I can't think. Maybe they want to have a little spa day. Maybe they just, they need something to rejuvenate themselves and their oh souls. I don't know. So, <laughs> throughout West, South, and Central Africa, the mythical water spirit called Mami Wata, which means Ooh. mother of the waters, was only worshipped for their ability to bestow beauty, health, and wisdom to their followers. So, Mami Wata is often portrayed as a mermaid or snake charmer. However... Ooh. Her appearance has been influenced by presentations of other indigenous indigenous African water spriest as well as the European mermaids and Hindu gods and goddesses. So, like, that's another big one, but she seems, like, very beautiful. I was about to say, I love that one, actually. That Mm -hmm. one's actually really, really cool. Yeah. That's, like, probably my favorite right now so far. Like, I think that's really cute. That's so beautiful. Um, Yeah, I don't know. That's a snake charmer? That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just, like, kind of... (laughs) <laughs> like all of these are like we want you dead or i'm gonna yeah. mess with you or like this is the end of days or she's like i'm, no. date, I'm gonna date this fish mm-hmm. but this one's just like yeah it bestows beauty and wisdom and grace like that's yeah that's amazing she's amazing she's stunning also a beautiful name too mm-hmm. mommy Wata. that's a really pretty name mother of the waters wow i want her to like my mom <laughs> <That's so laughs> yeah dumb. like can you adopt us if you're listening out there we, I go. Us. I go in the bathtub tonight. I'm like, mother, <laughs> mother, please, mommy, want I summon thee to my bathtub? <laughs> Come hither, please. Please, so, please, mommy. Please, mommy. <laughs> please, mommy. <laughs> so the reality of mermaids was assumed during medieval times as well, when they were depicted matter-of-factly alongside known aquatic animals such as whales. Hundreds of years ago, sailors and residents in coastal towns around the world. Uh, told of encountering the sea maidens. One story dating back to the 1600s claimed that a mermaid had in- entered Holland through a dike and was injured in the process. She was taken to a nearby lake and soon nursed back to health. She eventually became a productive citizen, learning to speak Dutch, perform household chores, and eventually converted to Catholicism. <laughs> okay. So she lived a whole life. <laughs> Pardon? So it's a mermaid that ended up walking on land and converted to Catholicism. Yeah, she was nursed back to hell. Great. Uh, learned to speak Dutch, did chores, became Catholic. Great. That's a lot. That's a long yeah. list. So they said, let's just make you a housewife, huh? <laughs> let's make you a Catholic housewife. That is That'll a be long perfect. list. 
So that's one encounter. Another mermaid encounter once offered as a true story is described in Edward Snow's Incredible Mysteries and Legends of the Sea book. So a sea captain off the coast of Newfoundland uh, described his 1614 encounter and he saw a mermaid swimming about with all possible grace. He pictured her as having large eyes, a finely shaped nose that was somewhat short and well-formed ears. Ooh, I don't like that. That's mm. gross. Uh, that were rather too long. Well, were they long or well-formed, sir? Yeah, Get your which opinion one? Pick straight. One. Pick one. Pick a man. struggle. <laughs> so Smith goes on to say that her long green hair imparted to her an original character that was by no means attractive. That's I don't so like rude. you. You're rude, Mr. Smith. You don't like green hair? You don't like long ears? We can get a grip. Okay? You don't like green hair and long ears? Get out. Get a grip. You don't deserve anyone at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the woman that way. Um, I feel like the green hair thing comes from, uh, I think I've seen it before, like, just, like, in media and stuff, but I think it comes from, like, seaweed and stuff. Like, yeah. I've heard, like, some forms of mermaids having, like, hair of seaweed and stuff just because like ocean yeah yeah that's so a I've cool idea so maybe that's what they mean by the green oh, hair oh i like that i was imagining like you ever watch aquamarine yes <laughs> i was like obsessed with her hair because <laughs> she has like the little like colors in the bottom mm-hmm. of her hair i was like ooh, a little little teal in there <laughs> a little green cute but no this man just sucks so <laughs> he doesn't like colored hair he doesn't deserve you <laughs> None of none of the, none of the uh, mermen or like men in general dealing with these mermaids have been great so far. Yeah, They're like they don't have a good track record going right now. Also, like, why is no one talking about like the mermen with the blue hair? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they didn't have to go out of their way to say their ears were long, <laughs> that their hair was blue. It's because she's we a like, woman. <laughs> we have like mermaid feminist theory over yeah, here. Yeah, I'm about to get into it. I'm so upset. <laughs> So, in fact, this Mr. Smith... <laughs> Just go to the so- ocean and start screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Smith! <laughs> Mr. Smith! All the mermaids recognize the name and they come... <laughs> like, Mr. Smith? We've oh, come, my God. We've come to revolt. <laughs> we get, like, a bunch of, like... You know that the girl from the, uh... What is it? The... Spongebob movie? Yes. With the black hair. Yes. The daughter. Mm-hmm. Imagine just a bunch of her ready to fight in an <laughs> army. I, exactly. She's definitely a feminist. Mm-hmm. Tell me she's not. She Absolutely. is. Absolutely. She is. Her and Ariel, best friends. Best friends. And they're going to fight. They're going to fight against Mr. Smith. <laughs> they're going to fight. Against Mr. Smith. They never fight each other. They got to stick together to fight the problem. They're not the problem. It's Mr. Smith. <laughs> oh my God. I was trying to make a joke about breaking the glass ceiling, but it like water, like breaking the, oh. the surface level. Yeah. <laughs> no. Very that. Very that. So, Mr. Smith was so taken with this lovely woman that he began to experience the first side effects of love. Side effects? <laughs> Is it a disease? Is it a disease to love a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, oh, you began to experience the first side effects of love. Did you love her? I don't think you did. Explain you got a diagnosis. Her. It's love, babe. It's love. <laughs> it's, oh my God. it's just love. So as he gazed at her before his sudden and surely profounding disappointing realization that she was a fish from the waist down. So he was wow. in love until you realized she was a fish. Wow. Sir, you can't be in love, not in love. You're messing with her feelings now. Mm-hmm. Some people's kids. Anyway, <laughs> a surrealist painter, Rene Magritte, depicted a sort of reverse mermaid in his 1949 painting, The Collective Invention. So I kind of want to look up that picture. I'm going to look it up for you. And then we can maybe put it on our story or something then. Maybe it could be used for the post. What is it? Is it it's, just... it's like a reversed uh, mermaid. So I'm assuming like the top would be the fish and the bottom would be like legs. Oh, I know exactly what that is. Like so, I know exactly what that probably looks like. Let's see. Rene Magritte reverse mermaid. There's so is it like changing like the anatomy on it just to be I like reverse so. idea? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to look an image up. Oh. You don't mm-hmm. like it? I don't think anyone likes mm-hmm. a reverse mermaid. <laughs> Ew. Oh, that's I'm a, that's the picture. Yeah, yeah. The collective. Imagine invention. you saw that walking around a grocery store. I don't. I just don't enjoy <laughs> that. Imagine someone had that framed on their wall. <laughs> no offense, Mister Surrealist guy. It's not for me. Someone maybe. 
It basically just looks like a big old, uh, big old silver fish with just some nicely shaven legs. Nice, very nicely shaven legs. Oh, there's shea the butter on those legs. There's shea butter. There's uh, fish oil. <laughs> <laughs> he's got fish oil legs but guys literally the top of it just looks like a dead fish you'd find at like a supermarket mm -hmm. and the bottom's just legs like that's all it is like i know i don't know what you thought i'd be expecting but it's just a plain jane fish nothing cute not a rainbow fish nothing nothing just not plain jane fish. plain well, jane a rainbow fish i might be down at yeah beautiful. like from the book the rainbow fish that's what i wanted <laughs> That's what I expected. Have you seen? There's this meme that was online. I don't know if you've seen it. It was on TikTok too, but there's this meme where this girl, it's a cartoon, <laughs> and like there's like this like giant sea monster with like this ugly face that's like staring out of the water, and she's like, oh my god! And then she, it like walks out of the water and has like a ripped six pack and pecs. Oh. And she goes, oh my god. Ew. <laughs> no. I have not seen that. And I'm kind of glad I haven't. I should use this for promotion for this episode. It'd be so funny. You can't. I don't know if I'll share it in my story. We'll see. We'll see. We'll Ew. see. I'll just post that on my own behalf. Like, I'll just have it yeah. for mine. Okay. <laughs> Ew. It's so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ew. <laughs> side well, effects of love. Side effects of love, I guess. <laughs> Just the side effects. <laughs> so, moving on. By the 1800s, hoaxers churned out fake mermaids by the dozens to satisfy the public's interest in the creatures. So, the great showman P.T. Barnum displayed the mm. Fiji mermaid in the 1840s, and it became one of the most popular attractions. These, uh, those paying 50 cents hoping to see a long-limbed, fish-tailed beauty comb her hair were surely disappointed. Instead, they saw a grotesque... Oh! A grotesque fake corpse a few <gasps> feet long. It had the torso. Wait. It was fake. It was fake, but it was still a fake corpse. Oh, it was a fake corpse. Okay. Yeah, I was about to yeah. say, sir. Oh my don't god. I knew that. P.T. Barnum did something like that, but oh my but, god. Ugh. So the fake corpse a few feet long. It had the torso, head, and limbs of a monkey and the bottom I've part of a this. fish. Mm -hmm. uh, to modernize, it was an obvious fake, but it fooled and intrigued many at the time. Yeah. I. Well, ugh. Obviously, like, it was fake, but, like, I feel like it's the perfect, like, uh, conspiracy, I guess, because, yeah. like, we have such a conception of what a mermaid looks like that, like, if you, like, put, like, monkey, like, arms on it instead and, like, have, like, that kind of thing yeah. going on, it's like, oh, yeah, of course that makes sense yeah. that it looks like this. Like, if it was crazy enough, you'd be like, oh, mm. that's definitely, like, some crazy creature that lives in the water. Yeah. Like, it's easy He's to probably it. thinking sea monkeys, too, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. was trying to, like, play off that niche or something. <laughs> I was so scared it was gonna be, like, a real body. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the I, word corpse and I went, you better not, you sir. You better not, B.T. You, Barnum. <laughs> you better reconsider. I'll take reconsider. the greatest showman away from you if you keep doing that. <laughs> the greatest showman will be no longer. <laughs> the greatest showman will be no more. <laughs> the greatest showman will be greatest cancelled. That's what it'll be, sir. It'll be the greatest nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest nothing to ever exist. <laughs> so, the concept of aquatic humans was taken more seriously in 1960 when British biologist Sir Alistair Hardy proposed a new theory to explain some of the anomalies of human evolution. Ooh. Our lack of fur, big brains, and sub subcutaneous fat I can't read are just some traits that led Hardy to propose that humans descended not from savanna dwelling apes but more marine environments so Hardy and supporters of his aquatic ape theory suggest that humans took to the water to find food instead of land and eventually evolved to live in the water so that's one theory um he's mm. <laughs> see he's very completely wrong but also, mm -hmm. like, kind of right, too, but, because like, we evolved from, like, have you seen that picture of that, like, fish we evolved from? That, like, little, mm. I don't know the name of it, but there's memes of it everywhere. But we evolved from this, like, little, like, reptile thing that came out of the water. Oh. And it's, like, we evolved from that, which evolved into, like, apes, and then, like, evolved again, again like, over, okay. like, you know, billions of years. Um, yeah. <laughs> but... but I see memes about it being like, I'm gonna go back in time and push this wa uh this guy back in the water. Yeah, like I don't know how much I believe that. Like I believe mm -hmm. that like you could evolve to your surroundings if needed, but like I yeah. guess if there was really no source of food, you but, like if you, you had to like just go it. in the water and just start growing legs or. Yeah, different. but that would be, like, a huge evolution, th yeah. like, a huge process to evolve. Like, it wouldn't be, like... Yeah, it would have to depend know. on where in the evolution process were they. Were they semi-aquatic? Could they, yeah. like, go into the water, but also could be on dry land, or was it... Because if it was just 
they were primates and then they went into the water, that would not yeah. happen. But if they were, like, semi-aquatic, maybe? Yeah. But I can see how, like, for 1960, though, they were, like, tr- trying to theorize that. That makes sense. And I wonder if it's saying, like, it was before, like, our human time. Like, if there was, like, another version of humans mm. that was before us. Oh, that, interesting. Like, I don't know if that's what it's saying, but maybe it's, like, a different process in the yeah. evolution i it could be like a theory too like a th- more of like a theoretical yeah than an actuality yeah because it's saying like if it were an aquatic ape theory like it was it's more of like a could it crazy, have happened yeah could it have been an aquatic mm, thing that's interesting so um this theory of like evolving to live in the water um many used to perpetuate the idea of mermaid existence so according to ohio state university uh, Hardy's theory remains largely controversial and lacking in evidence. The majority of archaeological evidence supports a human evolution that occurred on land rather than in water. But mm-hmm. could there be a scientific basis for the mermaid stories? Some researchers believe the sightings of human-sized ocean animals such as manatees and dugongs might have inspired mermoke, merfolk legends. <laughs> mermoke. Mermoke. <laughs> mermoke. Uh, these animals have a flat mermaid-like tail and two flippers that resemble stubby arms. They don't look exactly like a typical mermaid or merman merman of course but many sightings were from quite a distance away and being mostly submerged in water and waves only parts of their bodies were visible so identifying animals in water is inherently problematic since eyewitnesses by definition are only seeing a small part of the creature when you add in the factor of low light at sunset and the distances involved positively identifying even a known creature can be very difficult a glimpse of a head, arm, or tail just before it dives, right before the waves might have spawned some mermaid reports. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of information there. Yeah. And then I do have a few mermaid, more mermaid sightings if you wanted to get into mm-hmm. those too. Yeah. So, yes. But that was more of like the history of it all, like some really like important sightings that have happened throughout history around the world. Yeah. I feel like I've only really heard of, um, I feel like maybe I've possibly heard of kappas a little bit before just the name yeah um and then i've heard of the pt barnum thing but like i didn't mm-hmm. know a lot about it i didn't know that it was like a fake corpse that's just like that grosses me out that grosses me <laughs> but out no, those are like really interesting stories um yeah like i said i think i really liked um the african uh goddess one that one was just really really cool Mm-hmm. Like, I really like that one. Like, the mother of the water is what's The mom, I can't think of, yeah, the mother of water. Mm-hmm. That, that was, one. like, her translation name. I love it. Yes. I love that one a lot. But those were all so fun. But now yeah. we're going to get into more sightings of just, like, random people mm-hmm. that are just, like, fun sightings. Mm-hmm. Including the sighting I had. I didn't see any. <laughs> <laughs> Including the sighting of Logan. <laughs> Logan is the sight to see. So I am the mermaid. <laughs> you are the mermaid. <laughs> So, this sighting is 1943 uh, Kai Islands. So, during World War II, Japanese soldiers were stationed in a 555-square-mile area in the Kai Islands in Indonesia. There, they had some strange encounters with mermaids during the 1940s. The local villagers were familiar with these creatures and called them Orang Aiken, which translates to manfish. The creatures were described as being around 150 centimeters tall, having spikes on the spine, shoulders, and neck. They were said to have pink salmon-colored skin and a mouth that resembled a carp. Ew. Ugh. Rather than having a fish tail, these creatures had long arms and frog-like legs, oh. both of which had talons at the ends. <gasps> Absolutely not. Ew. So, talons? Talons. I feel like a lot of the Japanese folklore has very, like, horrifying imagery. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. I know this is, like, a sighting, but, like, in general, mm-hmm. like, even when we watched, like... What was that series we watched that it was, like, all a bunch of, like, different Like, a Asian... bunch of different, like, uh, countries in Asia yeah. and stuff. It was called Folklore, wasn't it? Maybe it was. Yeah. I think it was called Folklore. Yeah, check it out. It's on HBO. Really good. It's so good and so terrifying. Mm-hmm. It's, like, basically, like, uh, each episode is, like, a different uh, country in Asia, like, mm-hmm. doing, like, their take on, like, a horror, like, movie. It's really yeah. good. It's they, really honestly, good. Honestly, all those different cultures do it best oh yeah because like like, it's nothing compared to like what we would see in like an americanized mm, version of any any of that like it's actually Mm. scary yeah and a lot of it does come from like mythology like they have in like uh different like uh demons or like storytellings and folklore yeah which is just crazy so good talons oh my god talons on the feet and the frog legs ooh, and the stupid spikes (sighs) don't get me started sounds like a like a 
um, like a Franken experiment. Oh my gosh. A really messed up frog. <laughs> so the Japanese soldiers recorded many different sightings saying they even saw some on land, suggesting they were amphibious, but mostly seemed at home in the water. On one instance, a troop of soldiers claimed to be exploring some unseen land and came upon a natural lagoon. Everything seemed normal until there were sudden thrashing in the water. Suddenly, an orang icon jumped out of the water onto a nearby rock. Oh my god! It turned and faced the soldiers to let out a gurbling, burping noise <laughs> that didn't seem to be friendly. <laughs> then they saw another creature moving smoothly in the water towards them as fast as any fish would. Whoa. Not knowing the intention of the creatures, the soldiers started shooting at the rocks and into the water only to have the creatures disappear from view. Wow. So a sergeant named Mr. Taro spoke to the villagers and requested any of the Orang Aiken were captured, dead or alive, to contact him immediately. It was soon after the chief summoned the general and, to his astonishment, saw one with his own eyes, the lifeless aquatic creature. He describes what he saw as, roughly, four foot nine inches tall, pinkish skin, human-looking face and limbs, spikes along its head, and a mouth like a carp. So Mr. Taro Hariba made his best efforts after the war to get the scientific community involved, yet unfortunately nothing ever happened. Mm. Wow. That that was World War Two? Yeah, during World War Two. That's crazy. Imagine if they made a movie about that. Just yeah. that specific thing happening. It's like the water horse, but like sc- but really like scary. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely like jarring and like terrifying. Yeah. With, like a Franken mermaid. Yeah. That's wild they could do like something crazy with that if they were to make it a movie but in mm-hmm. general the fact that like no one in the scientific community cared how yeah. how would you not want to know what that is yeah even if it like wasn't actually like as i guess hyped up as they like made it sound like it yeah. sounds like a. Uh, it was some type of like fish or like thing that could have been yeah. just really terrifying like it might have been something mm-hmm. that like maybe if they had because they said like they saw the Mm. the corpse of it like the lifeless aquatic creature so they could act, they could probably get that and like what if the government or something took it to cover it up mm. that's so very like possible. oh don't believe in mermaids don't yeah. believe it like they can control i also thoughts. feel like uh it's possible too like maybe uh with the war going on and like how they were probably like docked and based like at, at this location like it sounds like maybe they were disrupting the peace mm-hmm. and they were real mad about it yeah you know like they were i could just see that being a thing yeah exactly yeah but also the fact that everyone saw it like a lot Mm. of people in that the town or whatever saw it so it's like Mm. there's so many eyewitnesses it has to be real but also they want to silence it horrifying i would love to like look up something about that later like that's really interesting yeah, we'll have to remember the name of it. Yes. The, we'll go back and we'll... What's it called again? <laughs> Let's that's look really interesting. Name. I wonder if there's any pictures about it, too. That's, like, really interesting. Ooh, yes. I'm trying to look up its name again. <laughs> the... Why did I already lose the name? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find it at the end. But, yes. Very ah, creepy. We'll get back to it. Ah, we'll get it back to it. <laughs> so, the next story, the 1967 British Columbia, Canada. So, this is another one. So, how crazy would it be to see a real mermaid just lounging on the beach for hundreds of eyes to see? So crazy. So crazy. (laughs) The social media exposure would undoubtedly capture every moment and be able to debunk any fakers. That was not the case back in 1967 near the main island of British Columbia. So, story goes, a ferry filled with tourists spotted a blonde-haired mermaid sitting topless on the beach, eating a salmon fish, and enjoying the wave splash upon her. One witness said she was attractive and had dimples. There was one photo taken of the event, which does not show a blonde woman with the lower half of a... Wow. Which does show a blonde woman with the lower half of a porpoise. So a similar incident happened later that week with a mermaid spotting. By the time, there were plenty of skeptics who didn't believe she was real. So, like, that's part of it, but I'm like... The fact that someone got a picture of it... Yeah. Ugh. That's just, like, crazy to me, because I've never heard of, like, a mermaid sighting like that, like... Yeah. Uh, specific before? Or like, distinct? it almost seems, like, post. Like, that is yeah. very no, much, like... Yeah, it feels almost like, uh, could it be possible, like, someone put on a fishtail and was yeah. hanging out to, like, mess with people. Yeah, but the fact they were eating a fish... Yeah. But, like, they could just be, like, that if, person. If it wasn't know. a mermaid, that's a very committed actor. Yeah. They're like, like I'm gonna eat this fish. I'm gonna eat this salmon. Yeah. I'm just gonna go for I'm it. I'm gonna like, do it. Arr. Oh, my gosh. Ew. Like, Ooh. people eat sushi, do your thing. But, like, a whole, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> gross. Mm-hmm. So, Charles White from the Undersea Gardens financed $25,000 reward for the mermaid's capture and what? even offered room and board with special combs for the mermaid's pleasure. What? This may sound odd, but the company was desperate to prove her existence. Unfortunately, the story died soon after. So, like, he put out this whole offer mm-hmm. and nothing. 
nothing came. How would the mermaid stay with them though? If like they need to go back in the water, like yeah. would they just like put them in, put her in the bathtub? Like uh, yeah, uh, the thirteenth year. It, Thirteenth like, year. Like, Stop it. That's so good. What? <laughs> yeah. Also, what is she gonna do with money? I'm sure, like in her mermaid world, they don't got human currency. Yeah, I don't know if they have capitalism underwater. They don't like, got don't that know. under there. I don't also, think they have a an economy. That cash is gonna turn into mush real soon, buddy. Yeah. Unless it's waterproof. Right. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was like, when it's like twenty five thousand dollars for, I was like. What is she going to do with it's money? Not like she can spend it on land. What are you talking about? Also, how is she going to sit in that little room <laughs> with the combs? Buy more salmon, I guess. Buy more salmon. Make a water room. I don't know. <laughs> it's a whole hot tub. <laughs> and then this next story, uh, 1998, uh, Kalua Kona. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, the island of Hawaii has plenty of folklore and legends around the beautiful aquatic creatures. Ooh. Oh, wait. This reminds me of the shark episode of Goosebumps. Or is it? No, it's... um. It's not Goosebumps. It's it's uh, la, 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 la. what's the other show? The other horror show? Yeah, but it's like Arl Stein. Um, not Goosebumps. It's <sighs> uh, there's two sentence uh, horror. Um, there's uh, but it's like Goosebumps. We watched it. To, was it the? It's the shark. It's a shark episode. The kids turn. The kid in Hawaii turns into a shark when he goes in water. Have you not seen this? I don't know. I don't know if I it's have. Like the show is it like newer? Is it older? It's older. Are you afraid of the dark? No. Oh, what the haunting haunting, or... haunting hour? It's haunting. Okay, it's okay. a haunting hour episode. I, was I, like, Why I don't think I've seen it? that one. There's a haunting hour episode about that. I'm pretty sure it was haunting hour, where this kid was I in Hawaii. I've seen all the haunting hour episodes. What the heck? Well, now I'm looking it up because you're questioning it. I'm just haunting saying. Hour, I thought I saw all of them. I thought you and I both have episode. seen all of them. Watch it, are yeah, you it's, it's Pool mm. Shark. The Pool Shark episode. Yeah. Yeah. What? Now you have to watch it. It's amazing. Mm. I know there's an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. This one? Like Remember? That, but... This guy? It's in Hawaii? I think it's in Hawaii. I don't know who that is. Oh, How my. have I not seen that episode? I thought I've seen all the Haunting Hour episodes. <gasps> well, you're <gasps> in store for yes, a shark I have episode. To watch after this. There you go. So, anyway, the island of Hawaii has plenty of folklore and legends around beautiful aquatic creatures. But in 1998, a diver named Leecher claims he got the first ever documented proof that mermaids do exist. Uh, Leecher operates the Jack Diving Locker of Kauai and was 20 minutes off the coast of Kauai when he saw what looked like a nude woman uh, swimming with a pot of dolphins. The woman was able to keep up the pace with the dolphins, which Liker thought was odd. All of a sudden, she jumps into the air and he realizes the lower half of her is a fish. Ten people on the boat witnessed the incident, but the mermaid disappeared after just two jumps out of the water. You might think this is the end of the story, but an hour later, as Liker was photographing some underwater life, that same mermaid brushed up against him while swimming and turned back around just in time to snap a few pictures. Oh, wow. And he said that, Quote, I feel very lucky that I'm the one to finally prove to the world what people here have known for half a century. So that's sweet. But, like, did he wow. prove it? I want to see the picture. So we'll look it up. Yeah, I feel like I've heard so much about, like, different pictures and stuff. I'm like, where are they? Let me see and the them. thing is, people have these pictures, but, like, it's hard to believe anyone. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like, that's, and, like, that's the thing. Like, oh, I definitely have a picture of it, but you can't see it. But you can't see it. Or they and have it's it, not but, on like, the internet. everyone's like, it's faked, it's faked. So, like, no mm. one's going to believe it if they did have it. But Yeah, I feel like, no, especially nowadays with, like, how far Photoshop the internet has come, I feel like even if the picture was real, like, yeah. there will always be a way to dispute it. Yeah, 100%. like, everyone's always going to say something. Yeah. But. And then there's, the, like, the original Photoshop where, like, you could probably <laughs> just do, like, a girl eating a salmon and off like, the coast of Canada. Like, that is a mermaid for sure. <laughs> For sure. Honestly, oh just make gosh. it dark enough, far away enough. Mm-hmm. Someone will believe it. Someone will believe it. It'll be Someone fine. Someone will believe it. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to think. How many? How much time do we have? I'm trying to think We've how many stories. we a little bit of time still. Okay. Is there anything else? I'm, I'm trying to think of what other story I should choose. I'll choose this one. Okay. So this story is called 2012 Zimbabwe. I have oh. a lot of different stories, so I'm like, how do I narrow them down? You're just like trying to pick like what your favorite are. Yes, are. yes. Mm-hmm. So some mermaids just want to be left alone. This was the cave case of the Zimbabwe dam workers in 2012 who were trying to install a water pump, which was crucial to the local agriculture. Mm. Local divers and workers were hired to see what was blocking the pump, and when they surfaced, vowed to never return. So Sam Sepepo Nakoma, 
a water resource minister, told the Senate committee that the village chiefs could perform an ancient ritual to get rid of the mermaid and calm oh the workers' God. anxiety. First off, that's crazy. That like they can just perform or, like a ritual, like There's, modern day yeah. kind of what? The fact that like the Senate committee has like a certain water resource minister, a whole minister for the water resource. Talk about separation of church and state. <laughs> like, they said keep it all together. Like, you, know, you guys should just do well. A this ritual. is in Zimbabwe, so I don't know. Yeah, really but separate. still, but like, it's crazy. They said let's put it all together. So they did an ancient ritual to get rid of the mermaid and calm the wow. workers' anxiety. Did it work? Uh, no, they still refuse to return. <laughs> <laughs> I go, no, actually. No, it didn't work. It didn't. But they refused to return even after the ritual was performed. Being skeptical of the workers' reasons for quitting, the government hired outside help, as oh. they thought the belief was cultural. But the new workers reported the same thing and refused to finish the repairs. To this oh. day, the dam is still not finished. Whoa. Oh, so they thought it was just like, um... Like, a cultural significance of, like, tales that they've heard before and were, like, freaked out. But then yeah. they hired other people who weren't, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And they were still like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. That's wild. Like, there must have been something so bad that happened that they couldn't. Something jarring. Just even, like, a dark presence or something, too. Like, yeah. sometimes that's, like, all the vibes you need to be like, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. They got exactly. a water demon mermaid down there. I can't. Right? <laughs> exactly. I can't. So oh then, my gosh. um... I'll get on to one one last story. Yeah, we got we got time for one more. Perfection. Well, it's the last one. I thought I had more, so we're good. Oh, I keep scrolling so and then the I forget. Whole case. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 2009 Israel. So in 2009, dozens of locals near Kiat Yam, Israel, have claimed to see a mermaid off the shore at sunset. So these sightings went on for some time before the local media got involved. The onlookers said the creature resembles a young girl would often visit the beach and do tricks in the water. Eventually, the Israeli government noticed all the attention and issued a $1 million reward for anyone who could provide proof of the mermaid. People One keep million providing. dollars. I know. I'll find a mermaid. Back back to the guy in Canada. They were offering 25000 These people yeah. are offering a million dollars. But also, that guy was stupid before because he's like, <laughs> I'm going to offer $25,000 to a mermaid. <laughs> They're offering to the people who can find proof, like provide $1 the proof. $1 million. Dollars. That's yeah, crazy. Like, that's more realistic to me. That's, that's the survivor cash prize. That's the survivor. Listen, these people should have called the guy in Hawaii, got his photo. He had the proof right there. Mm -hmm. Get that money. So, um, this money didn't include capturing. It simply requires an authentic photo. So, like, they just want to... Yes, they could have just had the picture. So, NBC decided to do its own investigation and had a film crew stationed in Kirat Yam Beach oh, wow. morning and night, above and below the water, to document the mermaid. So, like, this Whoa. made headlines, pretty much. Like, NBC, NBC came was there. That's crazy. They were documenting the thing. So it's, it's just, like, wild to think about, like, um... Like, I guess, like... I'm not saying I don't believe in mermaids. That's not what yeah. I'm saying either. But I guess it's just, like, weird to think that, like, and even in, like, 2009, they were like, we should do, a, like, a like a stakeout for a this stakeout, mermaid. Like, like, that's crazy. Also, the fact that, like, it's pretty recent in terms of, like, all the other stuff that's happened years? in the yeah. past. Like, oh, it's cool wow. to, like, see, like, some spotting sort of recent. Mm -hmm. I just think that's interesting because, like, I thought people would be, like, way more skeptical, like, by that point. Cause, like, yeah. Because, like, skepticism is such a big thing, too. It's just, like... I don't know. I just find that really interesting that they were like, yeah, we should do this. It makes me hopeful that they get excited about it. Like, yeah. yeah, get excited about it. It's mermaids. Get excited. Get excited. So the crew claimed that late one night they managed to spot a human figure dipping into the water, then disappearing. The research crew did their best to pursue the mermaid, but were unable to trace its location. The footage was transferred to the Coastal Oceans Research in Los Angeles to see if it could be authenticated. Um, Michael Schott, the center's director, said that although it was impossible to unequivocally determine the figure in the footage, it still remains a viable option. So, like, this guy, this guy said it's still, like, a viable option that it could be like, a mermaid. Like, it's not, like, confirmed nor denied. Still. Yeah. That's wild. But the fact that he's like, yeah, possibly. Being super vague about, like, I guess they could exist. I guess. And I'm like, wink, wink. he's putting that energy out there. So this yeah. just means it could be but can't be proven. So mm. tourists and locals are still on the like still on the lookout to the to today. I bet you there's mermaid like focus groups there. Maybe yeah, they have like groups of people who like go looking. I can imagine they're like, I gotta pay my college tuition. <laughs> 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 we gotta find this money, find this thing. So oh, is the prize still out? Like, can you get them? Yeah, though? it's still on the lookout wow. to prove the existence of Kirat Yam Mermaid to claim the one million dollar reward. So like, people are still out doing the thing. That's wild. Yeah. So yeah. Those are all the stories I have. I wanted to get into the history of it. I tried to stay away from sirens because I... 
feel like we've talked about sirens. Quite yeah, a few times. but that's also yeah. like something I feel like you would be. Oh, like if in, I ever did an episode. Yeah, or like okay. if you ever want to dip your toe, because I don't want to. I don't want to step on your toes. But also, mermaids are more of like a. Maybe the summer crazy. caves. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was really fun. Thank was, you. Like, I really liked all of those. I didn't know most of those stories. And yeah. I didn't even know there was, like, actual mermaid sightings. Like, mm-hmm. I genuinely did not know that there was, like, actual people who swear they've seen them before. Yeah. I thought it was just, like, all TV and media. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Well, it's also fun that's all around the world and it's been happening for, like, mm-hmm. crazy amount of years. Yeah, I feel like it was, like, a good jump in time. Like, I saw, like, what was it? There was, like... Uh, 1960s, like 1999, I heard, and like mm-hmm. 2009. Like, that's just wild me. That's so many different uh, timelines that the sightings are still being seen. Yeah. We should go looking for one. Get that $1 million. We should search in the Monongahela. <laughs> in the Monongahela. There's definitely a mermaid in one of the there's three defi- rivers in Pittsburgh. There's definitely something lurking in there. there there's something lurking it's in there. Nessie, maybe. Something murky. <laughs> something murky and lurky right in there. <laughs> So I'm going to close this out in our conclusion. So in conclusion, there are so many stories of mermaids out there from all around the world that span throughout time, as we've said. So it's undeniable that people are seeing something out there. But what is it? Is it a manatee, a character of Greek mythos, or a sinister children-eating kappa creature? (laughs) We don't know. We may never know. And the truth behind the existence of mermaids and what they really are will forever remain a a mystery. mystery. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, this was a great episode. I had a Thank good time. Thank you. It was fun to just chat. Very imaginary too. Very uh, yes, like fun. Exactly. Just going through it, I was really happy with that. Yeah, like it was not super scary. Like it had the elements of like, mm. oh, it eats children, but like it also was just like, what is that? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> what a lot. is happening? <laughs> but, All right, yeah. so we will see you guys next week for my case we will and in the meantime me and tiffany are gonna go swimming and look for some mermaids 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 (laughs) all right bye. bye